Welsh politics. The car blew up in the driveway seconds after it was started up. Mr Gower's wife Jane was in the house. Police have sealed off the house in the village of Hancombe where Mr Gower's car was blown up this morning. I suppose the, uh, the most poignant example that comes to mind was in the aftermath of the September 11 attacks when I was putting a book together with a colleague in the United States and we were inviting different people to contribute uh, different essays about how journalism had responded to the attacks. And at that time, there was very little online reporting, but uh, we recognized it as being an important area that deserved attention in the book. So I ended up volunteering to, to write that chapter myself. And in the course of, of looking at how the major news organizations responded on September 11, I, I was surprised to discover the extent to which ordinary citizens had been involved in newsmaking that day as well. And this was before the notion of citizen journalism had really emerged. That would take place a few years later. At that time, people were described as sort of personal journalists or amateur newsies, do-it-yourself reporters, uh, a lot of different kinds of terms to describe what seemed to be a, a new phenomenon, and that is people participating in newsmaking through di different types of digital technologies and, uh, and online and through websites and so forth. So uh, ever since then, I've been trying to, to understand what's happening and, uh, and to try to think it through. Of course, the actual notion of citizen journalism, at least what we would recognize as citizen journalism, is much older. I would argue it goes back to the very early days of something recognizable as journalism itself. But certainly the idea of citizen, uh, citizen journalism is a much more recent uh, phenomenon. And, uh, and at least that, that way of talking about it and, and thinking about it uh, is relatively new. And so it's still at a very interesting stage, I think, in terms of journalism studies to be uh, trying to address some of these issues. Neither of them. We all need to have a healthy skepticism for everything that we, uh, we encounter. Uh, every, every kind of news report, uh, you know, you, you have to ask questions, you have to challenge, uh, you know, what you're being told. You have to uh, be careful what you actually accept as being self-evidently true. And, uh, and, you know, I say that somewhat facetiously, and that is to say if it's a, if it's a BBC reporter, I'm inclined to, to think that they have you know, checked their facts properly and that they are professionals uh, handling things in a responsible manner. That is my sort of starting assumption. But uh, it, it is always important, of course, for all of us to try to read news reports sort of against the grain and, uh, and not take anything at, at face value. Well, I suppose we're, we're both, aren't we, in the sense that uh, I think, you know, the distinction I'm trying to make with, between the citizen witness and the citizen journalist is that the citizen journalist, I think, engages in a certain type of uh, purposeful activity. You know, they, they are people who are thinking of themselves in journalistic terms. 
and, and recognize what they're doing as being a, an explicit contribution to newsmaking. They might themselves be you know, engaging in, in citizen journalism by you know, uh, actively sort of seeking out news stories or perhaps attending to issues in their community, which maybe in the past would have been reported by a local newspaper, which today is no longer there. So they're sort of stepping into the breach and thinking, well, in the absence of journalists here to cover this, I will you know, perform that role uh, on behalf of my community. Uh, virtual community or, or you know, a more concrete uh, community. Whereas I think that the citizen witness probably is someone who, by and large, is engaging in this activity by accident. You know, they happen to be in the right place at the wrong time and somehow, to their credit, have the presence of mind to think, well, I am here and this is important and someone should be recording this or documenting it or, or bearing witness to what's happening. And seeing how there's no one else around, you know, I will then step in and perform that role. And so it's probably something which they hadn't anticipated doing, uh, didn't typically sort of see that as their duty or responsibility or, um, you know, it's very much sort of a, an ad hoc uh, decision that they've made, but nevertheless a vitally important one. And I think we're now getting to the point where we accept that just about every time something emerges of you know, newsworthy significance. In all likelihood, the first person who will be on the scene beginning to kind of document what's happening is much more likely to be an ordinary citizen with their smartphone than, uh, than the actual professional journalist. All right. Well, I, I think that... Uh, I think most people that are involved in, in what I'm describing as citizen witnessing uh, are trying to do their best, uh, and they don't always succeed. Uh, sometimes with the best intentions in the world, they, they get their facts wrong, or they misunderstand what's happening, or they, you know, in some ways, kind of let us down a little in terms of the quality of, of what they're doing. But I, I hesitate to kind of criticize them for that, because... I think anyone who's doing their best in a difficult situation, you know, deserves our admiration, really. Uh, but that's not to deny for a moment that there are people there who, for whatever reason, are, are deliberately trying to distort the facts, who, who do tell lies, who fabricate evidence, who, you know, desperately try to distort, uh, you know, a reasonable interpretation of what's happening because they are they have an axe to grind or they're advancing their own personal agenda or they're engaging in propaganda or what have you. And although such people, I think, are very much in the minority, uh, there are enough of them out there to make any news organization very wary of the material that it receives uh, or that it has managed to identify through monitoring social media sites and so forth. So that's why it's so important for professionals to independently verify any kind of claim that's being made, double check you know, the authenticity of any kind of image, uh, you know, undertake all of those you know, uh, hallmarks of good quality journalism to uh, in, you know, independently uh, determine precisely what has actually happened before you know, simply, uh, well, in all, instead of just simply relying on, on what they've been told by sources. And of course, journalists have always done that. I mean, you know, long before the internet, journalists, of course, would encounter people saying, well, I saw this and I saw that, and here's a picture of this, and what do you think of that? And, and it's always been the journalist's responsibility to determine whether or not that's a, a fair and accurate uh, representation. It's a good question. I mean, I hesitate to kind of think of it as a movement per se. I think that there's a there's a sort of a tendency to do that. I think sometimes journalists use that kind of language, and sometimes academics do as well. But I, I think the the danger is that it implies that people have kind of consciously signed up to be members of a larger organization. And I don't think that many of the people that are involved think in those terms at all. Um, you know, again, they they probably don't self-identify as citizen journalists per se, or even in, in certain circumstances where they do in sort of local communities, they probably still wouldn't see themselves as part of a larger global kind of activity.
So whilst I think it's really interesting to look in global terms of what's happening and to make connections across different national contexts and so forth, we have to be careful that we're not just sort of, you know, coming up with academic categories to, to position people. And instead, I think we need to attend to the many different ways, very complex and, and sometimes contradictory uh, ways in which you know, ordinary people get involved in news making, which you know, I, I personally think is a very good and, and positive development. Uh, but as a, again, I hesitate to kind of see it as a, an organized movement per se. That, that too is an interesting question. I think that um, we sometimes forget, of course, that the journalists are citizens as well. <laughs> you know, it's paying, paying so much attention to the extent to which a citizen can be a journalist. We forget, you know, we should reverse that kind of logic and, and say, well, you know, to what extent are journalists upholding their commitments as good citizens within our society? And I think the vast majority of them are. But they can certainly be encouraged to to think of themselves in those terms and to reflect on the nature of their practice and the quality of what they're doing and whether or not they actually are enhancing and improving and enriching and deepening the quality of our democracy. And sadly, I think there are abundant examples. You just have to look at the reporting of the refugee crisis, for example, to see how irresponsible so many so-called professional journalists are uh, when it comes to reporting what they proclaim to be facts, which upon closer inspection just turn out to be, you know, in effect, uh, hate speech or propaganda. Uh, so sadly, there are too many examples of uh, professional journalists not living up to basic standards of professionalism. So uh, it, it, it goes both ways. You know, I suppose... Uh, without sounding too, uh, you know, relativist or philo philosophical for that matter, uh, truth is very much sort of in the eye of the beholder, um, uh, to some extent. And I think it's, it's, it becomes a challenge then for news organizations to try to determine, you know, what counts as truth in a different, circum different set of circumstances, what they can independently verify, uh, what, what they can sort of confidently say is a fair and reasonable interpretation of, of what's happened and its larger significance, recognizing that there will always be differing points of view, that the facts will be contested, uh, that different perspectives will, will be brought to bear to interpret the significance of, of what's transpired. And that's a really messy and, and complicated uh, you know, process. And I think that good journalism is about alerting people to the fact that that is that there's considerable uncertainty a lot of the time, that, that no one is in complete possession of, of all of the, the facts or, you know, is able to uphold a capital T, you know, definition of truth and instead uh, alert us to the range of different viewpoints and, and then in turn allow people to kind of make up their own minds. But it is a responsible responsibility of good journalism to provide as many facts as they can and to ascertain the quality of those facts and uh, to help equip people with the means to make up their own minds and their own decisions on the basis of that kind of, of evidence. So I think it, it's a vital role that journalists play within our, our democracy. Uh, but it's, it's important that we also, as citizens, take some responsibility for that ourselves and, uh, and, and demand of journalists good quality reporting. You're much too kind. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I have been pleased, uh, I must say, with the response that the book has, has garnered. Uh, it's prompted, I think, some interesting discussions. And, and there are a lot of people out there that are, are using some of these ideas and, and doing really interesting things uh, with them. And, and I think as an academic, that's, that's really all you can hope to do, is to try to encourage you know, conversations in particular ways. I, I don't you know, claim to to have the, you know, the best understanding of, of, uh, uh, of these different issues, but I, I, I try to kind of contribute to, to those kinds of larger dialogues and debates. And I think it's, it's a fascinating time to be exploring these issues because I think a lot of, of journalists themselves are posing very similar questions. You know, they, they are aware that uh, uh, in the past there may have been a certain degree of complacency where members of the public were concerned that they didn't really kind of 
feel that they had certain responsibilities to the public per se. You know, they had other kinds of concerns were first and foremost in their mind. And I think they've, they've often now recognized that sometimes, you know, members of the public have a better understanding of certain types of expertise or uh, knowledge, access, language skills, you know, all the different kinds of things which, which uh, can enrich and improve the quality of the journalist's reporting if they can find ways of kind of tapping into that collaborative kind of ethos and, and invite ordinary citizens to be part of the larger uh, news gathering uh, operation. And that, that's to the benefit of all of us, because I think in our democracy, if people are, are taking an active interest in newsmaking, that, that can only be good for all of us, as it, it enriches the, the range and diversity of, uh, of what's available for us to, to draw on. And, uh, and so it, it's all to the good. But as I was saying earlier, it, we always have to be careful. We always have to be skeptical. We always have to double check our facts. We need to ensure that you know, our reporting has uh, integrity that it's as honest as it can be, and, uh, and where we don't have all the facts, where we are making a judgment or interpretation or speculation, that we acknowledge that. And I think you know, members of the public will, will understand. Uh, they don't expect journalists to be superhuman, but they do expect them to be sincere in, in their reporting. And I think that uh, certainly the, the awareness most journalists have now that much of what they do will be subjected to very close and careful critique. You know, people will go on Twitter and point out gaps or inconsistency in their reports. They, they will blog, they will use Facebook, they will use other means to, uh, to point out and call attention to certain journalistic failings. That uh, it, it, you know, is creating an environment that should encourage good journalism to, to thrive. And, uh, and with luck, help to kind of weed out uh, uh, those that uh, in turn uh, are not committed to uh, truthful reporting. Now, the nature of reporting has changed considerably in the past few years. Traditional journalism has become more reliant on citizen journalism. Citizen always posts the earlier story and information on digital platform before traditional news organization. Back in the day, a reporter would go out watching when happened and then write about it. Today, anybody can deliver news. If you have a smartphone, we are all potential journalists now. Since citizen journalism has been produced, the freedom of speech has returned to the hands of every citizen. We can always get the fresh news from Twitter feed, Facebook photos, or Instagram in the first place. We are gonna get more accurate vision what actually happened in this moment. We are gonna see random people become the most important journalists in the world. Just tuning in, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Tim Cash. We've seen three big marches today. There's been a lot more than that, but the first we saw the Young Workers Union March where they entered three different buildings protesting union busting. Now, history will be written by everyone because it's in journalism.